The Australian housing crisis is pushing millions of hardworking Australians towards poverty and tragically more and more are ending up on the streets. Now these aren't people choosing to be homeless, they're basically paying the price for bad policies through absolutely no fault of their own. Despite the prolonged agony for those who are impacted the most, there's actually no signs of improvement. In fact, if anything, the crisis actually seems to be getting worse. I'm Biko Konstantinos and that's what we're going to talk about today. I was driving to the coast the other day and I saw a hitchhiker in the distance. Feeling extra charitable, I slowed down to try and give him a ride. But as I got closer, I realised the hitchhiker only had one leg. So I opened the passenger door and said, hop in. That's not even funny! Now you'd be hopping mad if you didn't subscribe to my channel. I'll provide you with independent analysis and commentary on the Australian housing market and all the global economic stuff that could affect your lives. Now what's going on with this housing crisis and why is it getting bloody worse? We are in the grip of a rental and homeless crisis. The likes we've never seen before in this the lucky country. Lucky for some, basically anyone who owned a home prior to COVID because because since then, the average house price in Australia has risen by 36%. How about that for doing nothing other than holding a property? And in states like Adelaide and Brisbane, it's over 50%. But it's bloody unlucky for others. And by others, I mean anyone who doesn't own a property. Because you've been right royally screwed over. Right now, experts say this is the worst housing crisis we've seen in decades. The rental vacancy rate across the country has dipped to just 1.1%. Now the worst thing about Australia's rental vacancy rates is that they're pretty much the worst in the entire developed world. Check out how Australia compares with its peers and it clearly shows that Australia has by far the least rentals available than any of its peers. I mean only Canada comes close and check out how many rentals the US and Singapore have. Another reason why Australia is the unlucky country for renters. Now the rental vacancy rates in Australia have been shocking since COVID and the worst thing is they haven't even improved and they've actually gotten worse. A new report from Domain is stating that they've fallen to around 0.7% but even the consensus of around 1.1% is bad enough. I mean look at Perth and Adelaide with 0.4% and 0.5% vacancy rates. In real terms that basically means that they're there's no places to rent in those cities. So what the hell's a renter supposed to do if they get evicted? They don't want to be homeless, but now that's a very real possibility for millions of Australians. Is this the most tense you've seen in a little yeah, while? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've never seen anything longer. Families facing homelessness. Have you had the discussion with them that they might need to live in a tent? Do they know what the rental crisis at the moment is? Hopefully you have a safe and secure place to live, but can you imagine if you were a family and you had to live in your car or in a tent in a park? The fear, the loss of dignity, the anxiety, the depression, it just goes on and on. I mean, I've never ever seen tent communities full of Australian workers. Bloody workers who either can't afford to rent or can't even secure a rental. What on earth has happened to this housing market? We understand the crisis is now so bad. Instead of breaking up the tent cities and moving people on, council workers are cleaning up rubbish in the area until these people can find a full-time home. I mean, there's even talk of Labor cracking down on caravans used as homes on private property. I mean, people got to live somewhere, don't they? If you've got nowhere to live, you'll do bloody anything. In Maslow's hierarchy of needs, shelters number one along with other physiological needs. In a sign of the times, a man is advertising on Facebook Marketplace single beds inside shipping containers for $200 a week on Queensland's Sunshine Coast. Can you see the absolutely absurd inequality that's now occurring in Australia? You've got a property owner who's made a cool $300,000 or more either tax-free or tax-subsidised depending if it's their principal place of residence or a property investment. Whereas on the other hand, you've got renters being offered a shipping container in the middle of a paddock with no 
no facilities or even windows for 200 bucks a week. Demographer and social analyst Mark McCrindle is across the detail on this housing crisis and joins us now. Mark, it is just heartbreaking seeing hard-working families and their kids forced to live in tents. Is this up there as the worst you've seen it? It is. Uh, we're not used to seeing these scenes in this country. But guess what? If you treat housing as a commodity with the primary purpose of being used to accrue wealth, then eventually you're going to have a housing crisis on your hands. That's what we've done as a country, and now we're facing the music. And it ain't the sound of music. And is there any end in sight, short or long term? Well, these numbers that we're seeing coming into Australia, more than 518,000 people net increase just from migration in the last 12 months, uh, is a new record. Not just a new record, it's an absolute disaster. I mean, check out our net overseas migration since the early 1900s. Since around the 1950s to 2000, the average nominal immigration levels per year was around about 80,000. But then after 2000, it spiked to around 200,000 per year. But now look what's happened since COVID. The government opened every tap, pulled every lever they could to ramp up immigration. They lost complete control and the levels of immigration and new population growth went through the stratosphere. Yes, I'm Greek. Yes, my grandparents are immigrants. So I can't whinge about immigration, can I? But goodness gracious, talk about overkill. If you look at the net overseas migration as a proportion of the population, you can see that the only time we've been close to our current levels was back in 1950. And that was after the war period where we basically saw zero immigration for 15 years or more. Nearly all of us under retirement age work. And if there's some sort of crisis at our jobs, we'll basically do everything we can to fix the crisis no matter how long it takes. But that doesn't happen for the housing market. This crisis has been in place for over two years and we've pumped immigration levels so high and so fast that we continue to make the crisis worse and worse. Seemingly not giving a rat's ass about local citizens just trying to have a place to live. It's not as though this happens overnight. How do we get to this point? How do we reach such an imbalance between housing supply and demand? Well, yeah, I mean, particularly because the 83% of the population growth at the moment is through overseas migration, and that is simply through policy setting. It's definitely not through Australians having babies because we're having so few of them that if we had no immigration coming in, our population would actually be declining. So how do we strike a balance? Because we need the migration to fill the skill shortage we have in this country, and without migrants, the housing we desperately need to build that won't happen either. It's a vicious cycle. Wait a minute. So we need migrants to come in to build the houses we need, but those migrants coming in are going to need somewhere to live. So then we're going to need more migrants to come in to build houses for the new migrants that recently came in. Hmm. Something's off. Something's wrong. Something's amiss. Well, I think we need to get back to those long-term averages. You know, if we get to the 200,000 net increase a year, maybe 240,000 net increase through overseas migration, which was what we saw in a big year previously, that's more sustainable than, you know, 518,000 that we've seen in the last 12 months. He's spot on. Urgent action to reduce the current levels of immigration must occur immediately. But you know what? Even reducing immigration to around 200,000 a year might actually still be too much and that's because construction levels have plummeted. If you look here you can see how the population levels have surged but at the same time development approvals and commencements have really fallen sharply. So maybe a better policy for immigration levels is to reduce the numbers to a level that matches the current development supply. That would see an immediate reduction in the demand for housing in Australia which would increase the rental vacancy rate halt the crazy rent price surges and most importantly of all ensure that hard-working Australians have a safe and secure place to live. I'm Biko Constantinos. <laughs>